So um, it is an honour to be speaking to you this morning. It's not an honour I normally seek out, so uh, just bear with me. I had banked on Matthew bringing his massive Bible with the huge text, and he's brought a really tiny one. So now I'm going to have to faff around with glasses as well, just to add a little bit more into the mix this morning. Um, I thought it would be really good if I just um, shared a little bit about who I am. I know that sounds a bit weird, but I'm a really simple person. Well, I like to think I'm a simple person. I don't think a lot. I'm not, I'm not a big thinker. Um, other people seem to think and come up with all kinds of ideas and have loads of stuff to say, but I don't really think very much. I don't know what I do do when I'm not thinking, but I know I'm not thinking very much. Um, I've got lots of things that are kind of, um, they go against each other. What's that called? Dichotomy? Yeah, any of those. Um, I really love people, but I'm not always very good at talking to them. Uh, yeah, I, I love people deeply, and I can be very generous, but I can also get really annoyed really easily. I'm quite forgiving, but I can also get a bit of an attitude about stuff. So I just kind of want you to know that anything I say this morning, I'm first of all saying to myself, I don't want you to feel like you're, well, you won't be being preached at because that's not what I do. But I want, I want you to know that I'm just a normal, de- well, down to earth, pretty overly earthy kind of person. So there, that was my little, also I'm scared of buttons. So you know if that makes you feel better? Hey, it's a real thing. It's got a name. <laughs> so. I know, I know, look, I'm doing so well. I'm living victoriously this morning. Look how close I am to a button right now. Okay. (laughs) Okay. Um, So another thing I just want to say, um, Matthew stole my thunder a little bit this morning because I was going to say the only reason I'm here is because halfway through life group this week, Matthew muted and then turned to me and said, do you want to preach on Sunday? To which I said, of course not. Um, Huh? That's right, yeah, that's what you're talking about when we are muted. Um, I'm not going to share everything I shared in Life Group, and those in Life Group will know there's a, probably a good reason for that, and we all know there's an unspoken rule about Life Group that what happens in Life Group stays in Life Group, right? <laughs> but I am going to pick out some things that I felt were really important. Um, I really, really love repentance. I love it. I could sit and listen to somebody preaching about repentance for all day. It's something that really fills my heart with joy. Isn't that weird? I need a drink. I've got no spit, love. (laughs) Perfect. Right. It's recorded, right? Lummy. Right, okay. So... That's just to all put you all at ease, really. That's all that was for. <laughs> okay, so um, I'm not going to use any other scriptures than the ones that Matthew put in the study thing. So we're going to talk from 1 John 1. It took us a while to find 1 John 1, didn't it, in Life Group on Tuesday? 1 John 1. Where is it? 1 John 1. 1 John 1. Have you got it? 1 John 1. We just kept saying it over and over. Right, let me see if I can... Find 1 John 1. I'm going to start in verse 5. I'm just going to read verses 5 to 7 at the moment. This, Thank you so much. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you. Bless you. God is light and in him is no darkness at all. If we say we have fellowship with him while we walk in darkness, we lie and we do not practice the truth. Now, in the version I read, it said we do not live out the truth. But my first point this morning, I just want to talk about walking in the light. Walking in the light. Repentance involves bringing things into the light. Living in the light. Now, in my experience, and yours might be different, in my experience, that's not easy. 
It's not comfortable, it's not pleasant, and to be quite honest, it's not pretty. It involves bringing something into the presence of God, into the knowledge of God, and acknowledging, I've really messed up here, I've done that wrong, again. Whatever it is to you, I've missed the mark, I didn't listen to you, I should have done that, and I didn't do what you said. Now, it might not be easy or comfortable, but it is always simple. It's very simple. Everything that God asks us to do is very simple. He doesn't tell us it's easy, but it is simple. Do this, and this happens. Do that, and that happens. Okay, see, simple. I like simple. I can do simple. I don't always want to do simple, but I can. But it's not only simple, it's freeing. Okay, bringing things into the light is freeing. Because... I don't know about you, but hiding stuff or keeping stuff to yourself is exhausting. Is it not keeping a secret? It's tiring. You're constantly thinking, am I supposed to say this? Am I not supposed to say this? Does this person know? Is it showing on my face? I am a rubbish liar. I would never have made an actress ever. Still got water on my chin. Um, Because how I feel is on my face. And any of you that have ever made me annoyed, not through your own fault, obviously, you you will see that. I I can't hide it. (laughs) Thanks. But if I love you, you also see that. But it's tiring, hiding stuff, keeping things locked away. It takes effort. Effort that, to be honest, I haven't really got, I haven't really got spare. So, bringing things into the light is freeing and it's simple. I just want to spend a few moments just thinking about light and particularly thinking we're going to use uh, uh, thinking about sunlight okay? and the power of light, bearing in mind that God's light is more powerful than sunlight. Okay, so uh, Sethi, would you just come and give me a hand for a second? When you bring something into the light, it can't stay dark. Okay, and this is what happens when you leave something in the sunlight for any length of time. You just might like just want to spread it out. Okay, so I don't know if you can see that. We'll 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 do a little Okay, and that way, Sethi. Okay, it's faded. If you bring stuff into the light darkness fades thank you sweetheart it fades the power of the light means it cannot stay dark no matter how dark it is that's fine thanks um it can't it can't stay dark it can't resist the power of the light just bear with me on this one okay i don't have any scientific evidence for this this is anecdotal I have found that when you get when you get a smelly pillow, and I, I'm sure you don't get smelly pillows. I'm sure that's just a ling thing. But you, in honesty, your pillows get a bit stinky every so often, don't they? Right? Head sweat, all that kind of stuff. It's not nice, and they get smelly. Now, if you don't have time to wash them and dry them before you need to use them again, I have found that one thing you can do on a really hot, sunny day is stick your pillow out in the sunshine, and it helps reduce the bacteria and odours. Like I said, no scientific evidence for that. There may be some, but it's not in my head. Okay? What I've found is that In short, Matthew's pillow smells less if it's been sitting in the garden for a while. Is that a bingo? I haven't mentioned children yet, but the husband. So if you leave it out in the sun, the power of the sunlight and the heat changes how it smells. Praise the Lord. I've tried that. I've tried that. I've tried that. <laughs> um, if you leave frozen things in the sun, they melt. I didn't bring an example for that because, you know, how is that going to work? But they can't stay frozen and solid. They can't stay hard. They have to change. 
because the light and the heat from the light melts them. Okay. And then, here's my last one. When I got these air plants, they, they came halfway up the bulbous bit of the glass. Okay. I've done, I've done very little to them. As many of you know, I am not a plant person. And they don't need very much. But they need light. And when they have light, they grow. Because these guys don't really get watered because they find it from the air. But they grow because they're in the light. They can't help it. They haven't had any help from me. But the light has caused them to grow. Are you, get, are you getting my points? Are you thinking? So if that's how sunlight works, how much more? When we bring our sin into the light, when we're brave enough to say, I've done that wrong. I need to, I need to get it out into the light. How much more will it impact our lives? How dark do you think it can be, our sin, before the light of God doesn't have an effect on it? He is light. In him is no darkness at all. He, he will change that darkness. You cannot stay, as um, Carissa shared with us, you can't stay in the ashes. He's been in the ashes and he's not there anymore. And so that's how we get out. That's how we get out of that darkness because he takes us out of the darkness. We can't stay dark. Our sin can't stay dark if we bring it into the light. See if I can do it without spinning it down myself. <laughs> Woohoo! Okay. Um, but also, you know, um, I'm only touching on this, guys, so don't worry. Things can't stay smelly. Okay? If there's no darkness in God at all, there's no sin in Him at all. Um, I believe our lives can get to a point where the merest whiff of sin will be spotted by us. Okay. How many of you have seen the, um, the advert where it's all about Febreze and um, there's a big klaxon sound. Oh, meh, 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 he's gone nose blind. Okay. The more accustomed you are to a smell, the less likely you are to be able to smell it. Okay. So you could... <laughs> If you get, in families, you will have seen it. If you are a family, you will undoubtedly have done it. When you're around children a lot, there are lots of smells. And you see parents lifting their small children up, thrusting their nostrils into the nappy region and taking a big, <sighs> and then still thinking about it. Can, can I actually smell that? Is that actually what I'm smelling? Because it's something that you are so used to. You can't actually smell it anymore. You're, you're not really aware. You, re you really need to think about it. And you know, some of our sin can be like that. We're so used to doing it that we really have to think about whether or not it's wrong. Is that actually sin? Is that actually what God wants for me? If you're, if you're not a parent, you really don't need to be very close to a child who has messed themselves to know that there's something going on there. Okay? If it's not a familiar smell to you, the merest whiff. I do love that word. It's a good word, so hey? Whiff. <laughs> the merest whiff will catch your attention and you'll know something's wrong. Then you, you know. That's how God wants us to be with our with sin in our lives. He wants us to be able to... Wait, what's that? Is it just me that can smell that? Just the smallest thing. He wants us to be really aware and bring it into the light because the light reduces the smell. <laughs> okay. Yeah. That'll do for that point. It's three pages, but it's only half a page on it. It's all I've written. Um, 
In 1 John 1, 8 to 10. Let's see if I can find that. Oh. Can't find my face. Right. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. Wow. Who would ever think that we would ever make God a liar? But we can. Repentance involves confession and an admitting of wrongdoing. Now that is embarrassing, deeply embarrassing to admit that you've done something wrong. It's uncomfortable. It's humbling. It's not nice. I don't like it. I want to be right. I want to be good. I want to be, you know, approved of. And I don't like to admit that I've done something wrong. But I think this talks about confessing to God and also confessing to one another. Not necessarily every little detail of everything, but admitting I've done something wrong. I want you to stand with me on this. I need your help. I need to be honest. How does God respond to our confession? He says he's faithful and he's just. He's faithful and he's just. We don't need to fear coming to God and, and admitting what we've done wrong because he is, he is faithful and he is just. Praise God. But let's face it. Let's think about the other side of this. How do other people respond when we admit we've done something wrong? Judgy? Shocked, standoffish, or even worse, overly sympathetic. Okay. I, um, I shared a fault or a lack with somebody recently, and I thought for a moment that they were going to go, Oh, yeah, but you've been so busy, you're so tired. You, you really need to cut yourself a break. But they didn't, praise God. Because what we actually need is faithful friends, not sympathizers. I don't need somebody to sympathize with me and excuse my sin. It's nicer, much nicer. But I'm already doing that. I'm already telling myself, well, you know, you did that because, you, well, you know, you were too busy not to or... You know, don't, don't worry, you'll, you'll get it right next time. Just don't think about it. Don't think about it. Let's not make excuses for our mistakes and let's not make excuses for other people's mistakes. When somebody comes to you and shares something, remember that they're already really embarrassed and a little bit anxious about talking to you about it. So let's honour them. Not make them feel, not make their flesh feel better, but let's honour their courage to come and say I want to share real life with you well then share real life back you say to them do you know what that was wrong I don't want that in your life either if you're prepared to stand up and say I've done this wrong and I don't want this sin in my life anymore and I don't want to be like this then I'm prepared to stand with you and say I don't want that in your life either I love you so much that I'm not prepared to leave you in that sin that's what Jesus did for us and that's what we can do for each other is not say oh it's a, do you know what Jesus loves you yes he does but don't use that as an excuse to keep going in your sin let's choose with each other to live in the light to walk in the light to step out and say oh it, do you know what enough's enough if you're ready to, to bring that sin to Jesus, then who am I to stand in your way? Okay. So we've had a point on in. We've had a point on out. I'm going for a shake all about. <laughs> I'm 
not really, but I couldn't resist the joke. Right. <laughs> I was laughing about that one for ages. <laughs> oh, dear. Right. Um, so, I want to talk about why we repent. What's it all for? What's, what's the real purpose? Now, I've been teaching kids work for ages and we all know the answer is thank you thank you it's all about Jesus actually just all about Jesus now if you've given your life to Jesus there are loads of decisions that you have already said yes to in advance and you said yes to them whenever you said yes to him so you don't have to think about is this the right thing to do now or not is this something that I agree with the Lord about You've already said it. You've already said yes to him. When you got baptized, you already announced that your old life is gone and you're accepting his new life. And here it is. You're standing in his new life. So there's no reason to be thinking about whether or not this is something we need to do. You yourself have already decided this is something you're going to do. Just a little aside there. Repentance is about living our Jesus life. In him is no darkness at all. Repentance is one of the ways we learn to be more like Jesus. Isn't it? It's great. It's not just about him being the author and perfecter of our faith. It is. But it's also about us saying, what can, what can I do? What part can I play? And he says, here, I've made a really amazing way for you to live more and more like me, to have less and less sin in your life so that you're more and more like me because I've got none. Repentance is a powerful part of God's redemption process for us. It's amazing. It's fantastic. You see why I love it? So if God's plan for us is to be like Jesus, in Jesus there's no darkness at all. We need to become ruthless. (laughs) We need to become ruthless with sin. We need to become intolerant of sin. We need, and I'm going to say it again because I think it's really important. We need to get to the point That our life with Jesus, living close to Jesus, living, walking in the light, living out the truth, just the merest whiff sets alarm bells going. In Hebrews 9, 11, it says he'll cleanse our consciences from acts that lead to death so that we may serve the living God. There's a reason he does all these things, not just because he's amazing, but it's always so that, so that we can mature, so that we can live the life, so that we can enter in, so that we can be with him, so that we can be like him, so that we can have fellowship with him. He can't have darkness where he is. So if we want to fellowship with him, we can't have darkness where we are. And we are only cleansed from that darkness by bringing it into the light and letting the blood of Jesus wash our sins, purify us, cleanse us. Now, I don't know about you, but when I imagine that in my head, I can't understand how that works. Because if I washed something in blood, it wouldn't be clean. So there's, you know, there's something magic that Jesus does but I don't have to understand it to know it's true I don't have to understand it to live in the power of it you know it doesn't have to make sense to me for it to be okay I'm working in my life it's still true even if it's weird it's still true bringing things into the light they can't fade they can't not fade they can't stay dark 
They can't stay smelly. They have to grow. We have to grow. We can't stay in fellowship with him, walking in the light, living out the truth, and have sin in our lives. So let's, let's become intolerant of it. Let's look to him. Remind ourselves how amazing he is. That we've already made that decision to follow him. It's too late. It's too late. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, things can't stay dark. Things can't stay smelly. No matter how bad your sin is, it has to change when it's brought into the light. Nothing is not affected. Everything is affected. Everything changes because of his light. Everything in us changes because of his light. Every thought we've had that we think is deep-rooted, every mindset, every attitude, every recurrent sin, every addiction, every flaw, every fault has to change in his light. It has no choice. So we don't need to be afraid that we're too bad for him to forgive. It's too stuck in our lives for us to change. That's rubbish. That is a lie. And I'm sick of it in my own life. I'm sick of feeling not good enough. Because I'm not good enough, but that's not the point. The point is he is good enough. He is good enough. He is in me and he is good enough. Okay. Um, Sethi, are you okay to come up and help me with that? I'm going to do something I really, really, really don't want to do now. <laughs> okay. Um, there is a song that we have been singing just the chorus of for a little while. Oh, Theo. Could you pop the words up? Just start with the chorus for a moment. Um, I'm going to have to face that way because I need the words. And that means also I can't see you, which is really great. <laughs> There's a song that um, I just think will help us turn our hearts. Fix our eyes. Change our ways. Open ourselves up to a bit of revelation this morning. Because that's all we need, is it? Revelation just changes it in a moment. However, we've been thinking when we suddenly realise that um, God's saying something. Pow! I can be different. Oh, I can be different. It's... Um, And I've got the verses. I found the verses out. Okay, so this is the chorus, but I'm just going to sing this. Sethi's going to help me, so you don't just have to listen to me. But I just, I just want you to just take a moment and realistically ha have, do some business with God this evening. If you're at home, whatever's going on, if you're washing up, I don't mind. I do that too. Just take a moment. Do some real business with God. Decide what you're going to bring into the light. Because you know everyone's got something to bring into their light, so you're not the only one. Father, I just want to thank you. I want to thank you for your wonderful gift of repentance. I want to thank you for your glorious light. I want to thank you for the power of your blood to wash and cleanse us no matter what. I want to thank you, Lord, that when we say yes to you, to your lordship, to your salvation, to your spirit in our lives we say yes to the fullness of who you are whether we like it or not you are glorious you are all powerful 
and you will change our lives. Lord Jesus, turn our eyes again and again to you. Woo our thoughts and our attention to your ways, to your light. Jesus, we're so, so grateful for who you are. Have your way in us, Lord. Have your way in us. Amen. Oh, it's exciting, isn't it? It's exciting. Let's let's go and do some repenting. <laughs> let's go do some more. <laughs> and some more and some more. Okay, it's good stuff. Okay. Have a blessed week. <laughs>